What is Lordship Salvation? I've heard people say, well, of course Jesus is Lord, so Lordship Salvation means you're making Jesus the Lord of your life. Well, that just sounds great. But the problem is, the way that churches today teach it, that's not entirely exactly what it is. Of course Jesus is the Lord of your life if you're a believer. He's the Almighty Lord. He's our precious Savior. He's the Christ. He's the Lamb. We love Him so much for what He did for us. And of course, we acknowledge Him as our Lord. But when the teachers today and the preachers and the pastors talk about Lordship salvation, they're not talking about just acknowledging Jesus as Lord of your life. No. They say, make Him the Lord of every area of your life. Now, here's the problem. And it's subtle. Yes, it is subtle. But the difference is this. When they say make him the Lord of your life, they're talking about you have to turn from your sins. Because they're telling you in a very subtle way that you have to turn from your sins to be saved. Or if you're saved, you cannot sin anymore. And if you sin, that means you haven't made Jesus Lord of your life. And if you sin, then maybe you're not really saved. Because after all, you shouldn't be sinning because Jesus should be the Lord of your life. And you see where this is going. Now all of a sudden you've got a works-based salvation here. Now all of a sudden you've got a, the, the specter of falling from grace. Or somehow losing your salvation. Or the dreaded false convert angle. So the whole thing becomes an entangled mess of doubt, confusion, fear and worry about am I doing enough am I elevating Christ enough am I worshiping him enough am I doing this am I doing that am I doing this am I doing that and of course Satan is laughing the whole time because you're not seeing God you're not seeing Christ you're not looking at the fields that are white unto harvest you're looking at yourself you're totally distracted by yourself you're totally looking inward. Am I making Jesus the Lord of my life? So you're constantly introspective. You're constantly looking at yourself. You're constantly worrying about your actions, your deeds, your works. And you're just off track. And Satan laughs and laughs at how he's derailed you off the path of righteousness. Well, I got news for you, friend. If you've believed in Jesus Christ 100%, my friend, he is the Lord of your life. He is your good Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd. You belong to Him and He knows you. Praise God. Acts 16, 31, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. Romans 10, 9, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 10, 10 says... For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth he confesses unto salvation. You are saved, my friend. That's what's important. And guess what? When you accepted him, he erased every sin that you ever did, and every sin that you're ever going to do, in one fell swoop of grace. He washed it away by his death, burial, and resurrection. That all-powerful redeeming act that Jesus did all those years ago. Romans 3.25 Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood, to declare His righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. 1 John 2.2 2 says, And He, meaning Jesus Christ, is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. 1 John 4.10 Herein is love, not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. So what does propitiation mean? Well, it means the atonement. It means an atonement. So what does atonement mean? An atonement is a kind of reconciliation between God and man through Jesus Christ. It's also a reparation for wrong or injury. To make amends. To atone. He paid it all. His work continues. He sits next to the Father and advocates for you every single day. And you are a new creation. You're not that same old sinful person. That sinful person was crucified with Christ symbolically and spiritually the day you accepted Jesus Christ. The moment, the second you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and believed 100%. That's when you became a new person. Galatians 2.20 says, And I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. 
The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And now you have imputed righteousness, imparted righteousness. God has placed his righteousness in you and clothed you in the blood of Jesus and the baptism of the Spirit. You have been regenerated as a new creature. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. You are saved, sealed, and sanctified from now till the day of redemption, and then through eternity. Praise God, Jesus is the Lord of your life. Praise God, Jesus is Lord. You don't make him Lord. He is Lord. Thank you for watching.